I want to throw some names at you. And yeah, you just say that's the last question. Whose name you throwing? I'm throwing some I'm names. I'm nervous. At you. I'm going to throw some names at you and uh, tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Bill Cosby. Trapped in the book of Malachi. He's broken the law and no one's offered grace. It's a terrible thing to be in the intertestamental period when you in last John. <laughs> he only got a few years left. Name is off the university. Petition 200,000. Bars snatched off your shoulder. It's star fame. And you are now being held accountable, rightly so, but regrettably so, in your late 70s, in the season where you should be looking at highlight tapes. I do not know, no pun intended, if Bill Cosby will be afforded the luxury to rest in peace. He's in a living purgatory. Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton is, um, is a classically trained opera singer with wounded and ruptured lungs. You sing classical music, you know vibrato, you know uh, your diaphragm. But if you keep singing at that pitch, your strength can't maintain. And regrettably for Reverend Sharpton, he's had to sing solo, a cappella, for so long. His voice doesn't have the same strength. Something amazing happened uh, some years ago. I was, did a banquet for the NAACP. Reverend Jesse Jackson was the speaker. An old, sainted woman from the movement leaned over to me and she said, do you know what Reverend Jackson's problem is? I said, no, ma'am. She said, he's lived too long. We don't know how to retire leaders. We only know how to bury them. So Reverend Sharpton is, uh, has lived longer than his office has given him insurance for. So there's a lapse. I was going to uh, say Jesse Jackson mm -hmm. next, but I guess you answered that. Unsung hero. Would never get his due. Eddie Long. Bishop Eddie Long has left the body in a very vulnerable place. There are no greater forgiving people than black Christians. Mm. But we don't know how to forgive without a confession. Yeah. We love them. We want to see them do well. But we don't know how to approach it. And I'm speaking in generality. Um, when there's been no ownership. Bishop Bryant. John Richard Bryant. John. The MVP. Everything I learned how to do right in manhood and ministry, I learned from John Bryant. Everything I've done wrong, I learned on my own. Hmm. 47 years of married to the same woman. No outside children. No scandal. No woman ever called our house and knocked on the door to model integrity that I've never in all of my years heard my father cuss I, is a, a model of manhood I can only be in awe of. Old R&B song that said, no matter how high I get, I'll always look up to you. That's who John Bryan is to me. Floyd Flake is my closest realization of Adam Clayton Powell. Wow. To actually see ministry in the marketplace. To not preach it, but to be a practitioner of it. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Floyd Flake. I want to throw some young names out. Mm -hmm. 
or I should say younger. Yeah. Liston Page. Probably the most brilliant biblical mind in the body who was born too late. He is a critical mind absent of technological savvy. And so the rawness of his presentation, you can't tweet him. You can't Instagram that. Uh, the messages that Liston Page preaches requires a cassette tape. You need to rewind that to it. He doesn't preach in sound bites. Uh, and so he's, um, he's classic because he's out of his time. Brian Carnes. Brian Kahn is uh, a walk-on player for the NBA. Hadn't gone to school, but extremely gifted and has incredible opportunity that is only matched by incredible temptation. So he'll only go as far as his discipline will allow, but his gift will take him around the world and back. Noel Jones. No, Jones is uh, the Billy D. Williams of the gospel, smoothest man on the planet. Uh, and is just uh, brilliant, charming, charismatic, reserved, and a word my generation doesn't know, a gentleman. T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is um, Wikipedia. You could not introduce him and give the effulgence of what he does. Uh, it is um, the eighth wonder of the world. Somebody with a high school diploma has seven New York Times bestsellers. The most prominent preacher in America, black or white. Done plays, done movies, won Grammys, now has a talk show. Um, and has maintained his brand publicly. Publicly. Um, I'm, I'm in awe of him. You can't, you can't put him in a box. Jazz Skurlock. Jazz Skurlock uh, is positioned for global witness. The world has gone global. The church is still colonial. And so we don't really preach from a global perspective. Jazz coming out of Trinidad, now in the nation's capital, um, is on the front line and will be known around the world um, for being a global ambassador of the gospel. Neil Ellis. Neil Ellis, um, I think is you have to hitch to the analogy of jazz. Will have a global impact, but may not have American acclaim. Is that um, it is amazing the greatest black actors are now British and have learned the accent and can take on American roles, but they had to come here in order for their craft to be shown. I think that the gift and the anointing on Neil Ellis is undeniable. But whatever he does in America next will really put the stamp on what he does. George Bloom. Has the problem of many kids in the wrong school. Is that George Bloomer will not do as far as he can if he doesn't find a challenge, that he can get bored where he is and do well, but he will fight against mediocrity because nobody is challenging him. And that's how you play word chest. Thank you, sir. Great interview. I appreciate it.